As we uh, discussed a little bit earlier, Senator Luger had a couple of votes this morning at 9.45 and 10.15, so he's graciously uh, agreed to uh, come and uh, give some brief remarks. I just, I think most people know Senator Luger and his leadership in the, this area of global food security, the Luger-Casey bill, the uh, uh, leadership on the Foreign Relations Committee, once upon a time the Agriculture Committee. Uh, and uh, I don't want you to hold this against him, but he's the reason I'm in Washington, D.C., because I was the first agricultural legislative assistant. So, Senator Luger, please come up and give me your remark. Well, thank you very much, Bill, and I thank the, the panel for allowing this interruption because uh, you're on the track of global security, food security, and uh, the presentation you have just heard on Haiti that I shared at least a part of was a very, very important contribution. But let me thank again Bill for his invitation and for his service throughout the years. And it's good to be among so many friends and colleagues with whom I've worked for many years with so many of you in the issues of agriculture and rural economics and hunger and global development. The mission of the Global Harvest Initiative, which is immediately at hand and for which I'm very enthusiastic, is an important one from both a national security and a human development perspective. Much has happened since I last addressed this group in September of last year, as you can see from the ambitious program for today's symposium. And I'm confident the ideas and the energy which emerge from today's proceedings will help achieve the goal we all share, namely bringing about a sustainable long-term increase in the productive capacity of the world's farmers, sufficient to feed a world population that is likely to reach 9 billion people by the year 2050. I've made my own small contribution to today's events by proposing some solutions in a book chapter that I was honored to co-author with Dr. Norman Borlaug and his associates. As you may know, I long admired Dr. Borlaug, a Nobel Peace Prize winner, father of the Green Revolution, and was often the recipient of his wisdom and counsel when we asked him to testify annually before our Senate Agriculture Committee in the Senate. He and I agreed last year to cooperate on this chapter, but he passed away as soon after the work commenced. And I'm pleased and grateful that Dr. Borlaug's longtime friend and collaborator, Chris Downswell, agreed to pick up the torch and carry it to the finish line. He worked closely with me and my staff to get the final text into shape. I won't go into many of the details here of what we have proposed, I'll leave that for Chris at the discussion later today. But we're lucky to have Chris with us as he spends much of his time traveling, especially in Africa. Chris has a wealth of field experience. I urge those of you who are interested in his insights to engage him while you can. It won't surprise any of you here, however, to know that one of the solutions we propose is for Congress to pass the Luger-Casey Global Food Security Act. Its main aim, of course, is to get the United States government to recognize that fighting hunger and promoting agricultural development is a major national priority. It's been passed out of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and when Secretary of State Clinton testified just before us a, a month ago, it was, it was clear that there was a strong convergence now between the Luger Casey bill and her Global Hunger and Food Security Initiative. Based on that and discussions among our staffs, I believe we have an opportunity in the coming months to achieve something close to a consensus and pass a global food bill that would have major benefits for international health and stability as well as for the United States foreign policy. But Luger Casey is no silver bullet and in our chapter we are humble, I hope realistic about the ability of the international community to achieve rapid progress in food security. The fact that so many different disciplines and organizations are represented here today is testimony 
to the complexity of the challenge that lies before us. It will be all the harder without the right tools functioning in the best ways. One of these tools is the United States system of foreign assistance, which is currently undergoing a series of reviews and examinations by the administration and by the Congress. Reforming both the substance and the architecture of foreign assistance is a priority for the Senate Foreign Relations Committee now. One of the key questions we're looking at is how to best strengthen the capacity of our premier assistance agency, the United States Agency for International Development, to run effective programs. To be frank, during the last two decades, we in Washington have not made it easy for USAID to perform its mission. Spending on foreign assistance dropped sharply during the 1990s. And thanks to various organizations, USAID lost its own budgeting, evaluation, and policy capabilities. There was a broad consensus among development experts that the loss of these functions at USAID is inhibiting the success of our development programs. Our development efforts in agriculture and in other areas will never be as effective as they should be if the agency that houses most of our development expertise is out of relevant policy and budget decisions. I believe USAID must have a central role in development policy decisions. In the Luger Casey bill, we've designated it as the lead agency to implement a government-wide food security strategy. To fulfill that role effectively and sufficiently, USAID must be able to evaluate programs, draw the lessons learned, and use that knowledge to develop best practices and methods, which can be used in future projects and by other agencies. In our chapter, we note the extreme frustrations that some of the multilateral development banks have experienced in recent years in trying to implement agricultural aid programs that are effective and successful. This means we'll have to uh, continue to increase USAID's levels of staffing and expertise. Senator John Kerry and I have introduced legislation, the Foreign Assistance Revitalization and Accountability Act, that reflects these principles. The bill, the product of more than a year of research and study, has bipartisan support in the Senate and solid backing from the development community. A strong development agency will help the Secretary of State achieve the goals of her Global Hunger and Food Security Initiative and other foreign policy objectives as well. This new, stronger foreign assistance architecture must be wedded to a, a more robust approach to development policy, one that is guided by objectives rather than bureaucratic organizational charts. Roughly two dozen departments, two dozen departments and agencies, including the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Defense, have control over some aspect of foreign assistance. This fragmented structure can lead to a focus on technical decisions at the expense of a larger vision. We should focus instead on the big issues like food scarcity, poverty, and environmental degradation that hobble economic growth in so many of the world's poor countries. That means strategies that reflect the needs of the countries we are helping and the facts on the ground, rather than the vagaries of our own budget process, which often allocate funds according to lobbying pressures, media interests at the time, or political favoritism. We need to base our country's strategy on broad objectives and that way we can avoid setting arbitrary spending targets for specific sectors. For example, in our chapter, we argue that promoting food security will require investments not only in raising crop yields, but also in clean water, roads and other infrastructure, basic and higher education, and land titling, just to name a few. So as you proceed with your discussions today, I can perhaps inspire you with a note of optimism. We in the Congress and our colleagues in the administration recognize the importance of battling world hunger and the necessity of strengthening our tools to do that job. 
There is, I believe, broad bipartisan support for achieving these objectives. Such wide agreement on a foreign aid initiative is a rare thing. It is a rare thing, I might add parenthetically, on almost any issue for the moment. <laughs> uh, no outcome in Washington is guaranteed, but I'm hopeful that with the backing of the people in this room, and many like you throughout our country, we can bring these efforts to fruition. I thank you for your time and your leadership and your attention. May you have a productive and successful meeting. Thank you very much.